we have a patient that has multiple problems affecting her left hand. She has a peripheral compression neuropathy of the median nerve called carpal tunnel syndrome, a peripheral compression neuropathy of the ulnar nerve at the wrist at Guillaume's canal, and then on top of that she has Dupuytren's disease affecting the middle and the ring finger. So we're going to approach all of those at the same time through one long incision. You can see the incision that I planned out. The traditional open carpal tunnel release incision is a linear incision that goes to approximately the mid palm and through that incision I can approach the carpal tunnel as well as Guillaume's canal. However, she also has palpable cords known as Dupuytren's disease. These are cords affecting the palmar fascia of the hand and very common in patients from northern European descent, that being the Celtic Islands, Scandinavia, northern Europe, uh, including Germany and those countries. Less common in people like me with darker skin, but nevertheless, on her, it's affecting her middle and her ring finger. So we're going to excise those cords today because it's actually started to create a contracture to where she can't fully flex or extend her fingers at the MP joint. I've forcefully done so right now because she is under anesthesia. But through that incision, I will take care of her carpal tunnel, her Guillaume's canal compression, as well as these Dupuytren's cords. So I've exposed the carpal tunnel. This is the median nerve. So what's special in her case is the fact that she's already had a carpal tunnel release performed once before, and that's why we elected to do this through an open technique. I cannot do an endoscopic carpal tunnel release if the patient has already had an a carpal tunnel release done before because of the scar tissue that develops around the, ner uh, the nerve itself. You can see that the nerve is caked in there and I'm going to have to slowly separate it from the surrounding tissue. And this is just a very gentle, delicate dissection. This is all the scar tissue that I like to demonstrate to the patients that is building up around the nerve itself. And this is called an epineurectomy. I'm removing the scarred epineurium and then I will also protect the nerve with a nerve protector that helps separate it from the surrounding soft tissue and prevents the development of more scar tissue that might result in recurrence of her symptoms. The other thing that I'd like to point out is that the ulnar nerve is on the other side of this tissue here. I'll be opening up the common side wall that exists between the carpal tunnel and Guillaume's canal. This is the transverse carpal ligament, which makes up the roof of the carpal tunnel, but also the floor of Guillaume's canal. And as we dissect, ulnarly, we'll be able to expose the ulnar nerve. The other fantastic thing about this patient is the anatomy. This is the palmar arch. This is the arterial supply. As the radial artery and the ulnar artery meet in the mid palm and provide the individual digital vessels that will branch off and go to the individual fingers, as well as the thumb more radially. So we're seeing a lot of fantastic and beautiful anatomy. And then finally, the palmar fascia. This looks like normal palmar fascia, but as we move distally, we'll start to encounter the Dupuytren's cords, which are nodules of disorganized fibers or collagen fibers that make up the palmar fascia that can restrict the motion of the fingers cause the contractures that prevent extension as well as pain and discomfort whenever performing any types of gripping activities. Now I'm con continuing my dissection ulnarly to expose Guillaume's canal. Here's the transverse carpal ligament. Once again, the roof of the carpal tunnel is the transverse carpal lig ligament which makes up the floor of Guillaume's canal. The first structure that I'm going to encounter is the ulnar artery. The patient has a tourniquet in place, so the ulnar artery itself will not be significantly engorged. On the other side of that is going to be the ulnar nerve. My main goal here is just to decompress the entire tunnel. I'm being very cautious with my dissection. I have now completely released Guillaume's canal. Here's the ulnar artery. On the other side of that vessel is the ulnar nerve, which has been giving the problems of peripheral compression neuropathy to the patient, particularly numbness and tingling involving the small and the ring finger, some weakness, 
and the intrinsic muscles of the hand, but it's completely released. And here you can see the floor of the carpal tunnel. I'm sorry, the roof of the carpal tunnel making up the floor of Guillaume's canal. Now I'll direct my attention to the median nerve, which I will gradually dissect free from a lot of that scar tissue and then ultimately apply a nerve wrap around the nerve to prevent it from getting scarred in again. It's very important to be very careful around these nerves. They are temperamental organs. Here's another fantastic piece of anatomy here as the nerve emerges from the carpal tunnel. This is the extent of the carpal tunnel. It starts to branch, giving branches to the thumb, the index, the middle, and half of the ring finger. There are three individual common digital nerves that will ultimately split distally in the palm of the hand. So we're moving along nicely here. I've released Guillaume's canal. I've released the carpal tunnel. I've freed the median nerve from the surrounding tissue. And now I've started my dissection for the Dupuytren's contracture release. This is the actual cord, proximally. It looks like nice linear fibers, but as we go distally, it starts to become a little bit more disorganized. And here you go, as I separate that tissue from the underlying flexor tendon sheath, we're liberating the finger of this restrictive cord. I've done that for both the ring finger and the middle finger. Here you can see some thickening of that cord. It's not the thickest that I've seen, but it certainly is restrictive for this patient. And here's the other important thing that I need to point out is the intimate relationship between that cord and the underlying neurovascular bundle. So I have to be very careful about protecting this neurovascular bundle throughout the dissection. Otherwise, that can lead to problems with sensory loss, neuroma formation, and other problems that the patient shouldn't have to experience. As I carefully dissect this free, you'll see these tiny little bands that are still holding the palmar fascia and the Dupuytren's cords in place. It's actually a satisfying feeling to gradually liberate the fingers of this disease process. Really making my moves in millimeter increments here. Here I've completely liberated the digital nerve now from the Dupuytren's cord. And you can see that it's just peeling off nicely and ultimately there will be some residual fibers here that I want to carefully take down. But it's coming out nicely. And you can see that diseased tissue, just disorganized, nodular, restrictive, all of the things that we don't want in our hand. It's relatively expendable tissue as well. It acts as a protective layer, but we have so many layers in the palm of the hand that we can live without the palmar fascia that's diseased. There we go. The last remaining fibers that are holding on. Now I was actually able to remove both digits with a parallel dissection. So this was proximal, so imagine that was, this was the normal orientation of how that cord was in the palm of this patient's hand. Now you can see that the, the entire flexor tendon sheath, the digital nerves, have all been preserved and protected. The vascular arch is protected. The median nerve is protected. Here it is, arborizing to give branches off to the ring finger and the middle finger. This is a common digital nerve and you can see where it splits. Beautiful anatomy. Nice dissection. It's good to see 
that all of this will help the patient in the long run. In conjunction with the pain and restriction that the patient was experiencing secondary to the Dupuytren's cord, the patient was also experiencing some limitation and pain over the MP joint, which is known as a trigger finger. And this is the A1 pulley. It's nice to demonstrate this anatomy because the flexor tendon sheath is actually made up of a series of pulleys. These are little tunnels, there's five of them. The first one sits right over the metacarpophalangeal joint or our first knuckle. And that can be a point of restriction as well for the natural glide of the tendon. So while I'm here, I'm also releasing her trigger finger in an open fashion. This can also be performed endoscopically, but obviously we are here and we've got everything exposed, so I decided to release that in an open fashion. On the middle finger, you can see the natural anatomy. This is the actual pulley. I haven't divided it yet. So I'm just going to make a small linear cut along that pulley. The key is to release the entire pulley without releasing the adjacent pulley, which is the A2 pulley. There we go. We have nice release of the flexor tendons at the A1 pulley. I'll even take out a little portion of the pulley so as to prevent it from closing in on itself again. So the incision is closed. We have multiple horizontal fashion stitches or horizontal mattress stitches that have brought the skin up. I like to evert the skin so it allows for less of a widened scar when the incision heals. We took care of a lot of stuff for this patient. So we did a carpal tunnel release through an open fashion, which took care of her numbness and tingling in the thumb, the index, the middle, and half of the ring finger. At least it addresses that. We have to see how she recovers. We also did an open Guillaume's canal release which relieves the ulnar nerve at the wrist. That should address the numbness and tingling that she was experiencing in the small and the ring finger. We also took out two Dupuytren's cords from the ring and the middle finger. So hopefully that takes care of the nodular pain that she was experiencing, gripping things, she was feeling it constantly, and also hopefully gives her a little bit more range of motion of those two digits. And then finally, we did uh, an open trigger release for the middle finger and the ring finger, which we saw that beautiful anatomy as well. And then in, or, in order to augment or supplement the carpal tunnel release, I also put a nerve wrap or a nerve protector around the median nerve to hopefully prevent future scarring around the median nerve. Pretty much took care of a large uh, you know, cross section of my elective hand practice as a plastic surgeon, we do a lot of hand surgery, and it's interesting to be able to take care of all of that for one patient. So I hope you enjoyed everything that we showed you today, and we will keep you up to date regarding her progress as the days come.